Hello, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Fidelia Aguncha. The Human Rights Watch is accusing the Cameroonian government of illegally deporting over 100,000 Nigerians. In its new report, the group, the group says Cameroon has deported at least 4,042 Nigerians in 2017 alone. The group says the deportation is a breach of international and Cameroonian laws. The human rights group also accused the Nigerian government of complicity in the deportation of over 1,000 Nigerians in June. At the end of June this year, in a town called Kolafata in Cameroon on the Nigerian border, the Cameroonian military identified just under 900 asylum seekers from Nigeria that they wanted to deport back to Nigeria. Uh, the, author the Cameroonian authorities contacted the Nigerian authorities and said, we want you to take these people back. And instead of saying no, these people need protection in Cameroon, Nigeria sent six military trucks to Kolafata in Cameroon, where the military there forced the asylum seekers onto the buses, and then the buses drove back to Nigeria. That made Nigeria complicit in Cameroon's forced refugee return, which is illegal. We hope with the publication of this report that we are drawing attention for the first time to this long-standing problem. The UN Refugee Agency has documented almost 100,000 cases of forced, deport, forced removal of Nigerian asylum seekers since early 2015. It has not publicized that number. It's tried to keep that quiet. And so uh, we have uh, put this hopefully squarely in the public realm today. Our report also documents for the first time the appalling violence the Cameroonian military is inflicting on Nigerians in these border areas, and we hope that that will help put pressure on the military to stop these abuses. I don't think it is true, because I don't have evidence um, to confirm that, and uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, what we have had, and which they have confirmed from the report, is that the Nigerians have been forced back by the military of uh, the, the Cameroonian military. The government, we study the report, not NEMA. Government, we study and respond in the best appropriate way it should. The United Nations says over 1.7 million people are still displaced in northern Nigeria. In its new report, the UN says there are still over 200,000 Nigerian refugees in neighboring countries. The UN also raised concerns about a rising case of food insecurity in the region. It says over 5.2 million people are in need of life-saving food assistance, while it has been able to reach 3.4 million out of that number. This means 1.5 million people still need assistance in terms of food security. The Air Officer Commanding Ground Training Command, Air Vice Marshal Samson Akpasa, has assured the Abia State Governor, Okezie Ikpazu, and the people of the state of the Nigerian Air Force commitment to resolving the security challenges in the region. The AOC made a pledge while paying a cutsy call and the governor at the government house in Umwahia as part of his tour of state within the command area of responsibilities. The AOC also informed the governor of the NAF's deployment of air assets in support of exercise Operation Python Dance 2. The deployment, according to him, was in response to the Nigerian Army's request for close air support in the exercise. The presidency has com commended the members of the House of Representatives for passing a resolution to work for the unity of Nigeria. The House had restated its commitment to a united Nigeria in its first plenary after a two-month recess. In a statement signed by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, the presidency said it is gladdened by the position of the lawmakers which it added was timely. He assured the lawmakers the president remains resolute and committed to bringing the change he promised Nigerians in different facets of their lives. The Nigerian police says it has arrested 31 suspected kidnappers in northern Nigeria. A statement from the police says the arrests were made as part of the Operation Absolute Sanity on Abu Jamina Highway. The operation also led to the arrest of the gang responsible for the killings of some security personnel on Kaduna to Abuja Road and Abuja to Lokoja Road. 
some firearms, ammunition, army camouflage uniforms, and operational vehicles of the kidnappers were recovered from the bandits. The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAMP says its newly introduced central admission processing systems will help restore transparency in admission processes. According to the Registrar of the Board, Ishak Oloyede, the system will ensure candidates are fairly treated and expand admission opportunities, as well as protect academic calendar. He maintained the system will help drag admission processes and put an end to the issuance of internal memos. We want to provide ease for assessing our services, and that's the essence of CAPS. But in addition to that, you are also aware of the presidential directive on transparency. We also want to make it so that as you are admitting, the vice chancellor is aware, the provost director of what you are doing in JAM, JAM is aware, and all communication on admission will be registered and tracked. If the vice chancellor directs an admission officer that admit this candidate, to be there on record. If the uh, admission officer says, ah, okay, this thing is not good, it will be there on record. We'll be able to track the process rather than issuing uh, internal memo and so on. Everything will be tracked, everything related to admission. And that's why we are telling the admission officers, we are telling our desk officer, a vice chancellor, a rector, a provost cannot call you on phone and say do something. You say, oh, God, put it on, on uh, caps. And once you put it there, of course, there is evidence of what you are doing. All these under the table uh, deals that is uh, deny, uh, denying us the opportunity, the opportunity of uh, having accurate data will all be over. The Lagos State Governor Akiwumi Ambode has commissioned the first ever DNA forensic center in the state. According to the governor, the DNA center, which is also the first state owned in West Africa, will play a huge role in resolving all forms of crimes and paternity issues. Giving details of the DNA center, the governor said the facility was ca has capacity to provide the police prosecutors, defense attorneys, and private citizens with crime scene processing, serological screening for blood, and semen. Other features are DNA analysis of bone, teeth, and hair, maternal and paternal relationship DNA analysis, expert witness, and case handling services, paternal and maternal ancestry DNA analysis, cold case file review, and mass disaster human identification. The Nigerian media has been advised to exercise its constitutional right in the course of information transmission and dissemination in the country. The information experts believe journalists in the country are not doing enough and must not feel constrained in ensuring public access to information. They were speaking on the occasion of International Day on Universal Access to Information in Abuja, the nation's capital. While in other jurisdictions, you have uh, the press at the fourth estate of the realm as a convention. In Nigeria, it is constitutionally so. Because what is denied to our courts under Section 6, Subsection 6C of the Constitution, is what is given to the press under Section 22. So while the organs of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary share the powers of the people because sovereignty uh, lies on the people, and government has all its power in the constitution, while all those are shared, the judiciary is denied access to the performance of duties in chapter two. And that denial is given to the press. And so the press in Nigeria is constitutionally the fourth estate of the realm. And you are even pleading that that chapter should be given to the courts. Having an access to information law is not a guarantee of its implementation. And as seen on all continents, access to information laws may remain only on paper or worse be abused. Therefore, Mobilizing the implementation of the legislation in the rule of law framework is the next great challenge. Until this is done, 
right to information will remain challenged in many parts of the world. The, the Nigeria of today, because it's a democracy, and you know democracy thrives on uh, transparency and access to information. I believe that uh, journalists are not constrained in any way. You know that this administration inherited a law which is the Freedom of Information Act. It's there. It's, it's, it's been in operation. The onus is on journalists to use that law. As a journalist myself, I know that even lawyers and other professionals use that Freedom of Information Act more than journalists. So my challenge will be to journalists to use that law more. The law is there for us to use. Let's utilize it. The federal government has decided to pull Nigeria out of 90 world organizations as part of plans for the country's exit from the organizations, the Federal Executive Council has mandated a committee to come up with recommendations on the move. The decision is as a result of the financial implications of the country's membership of the, of the organizations. According to the government, Nigeria currently owes the organizations over $100 million and its failure to meet the obligations has costed a lot of embarrassment. Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, has accused some banks and financial institutions of ignoring regulations on money, laundering, and other related offenses. Magu, who described money laundry as a threat to developing and de developed countries, expressed regret that some banks had not been reporting suspicious transactions in line with statutory regulations. The EFCC chief also said some banks were in the habit of opening accounts for government officials even after the introduction of the Treasury single account, thereby allowing the diversion of public funds. The Nigerian Senate has summoned the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adelshun, and her counterparts in the Ministry of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udoma. The ministers were summoned to brief the lawmakers on the cause of the inadequate releases and steps being taken to expedite release of funds for the capital component of the 2017 Appropriation Act. This followed debate on a motion titled Inadequate Release in the 2017 Budget and the Need to Expedite Releases in Order to Stimulate the Economy. 15-year-old filmmaker and girl education advocate Zuriel Oduwole has just delivered perhaps her biggest speech yet. As a global voice in the area of education, she was invited to speak before over 80,000 people in the French capital of Paris. Delivering her speech in both French and English, Zuriel spoke about girls' education and the effects of early marriages on girls' development across the globe. You all to imagine. Nigerian teenage filmmaker Zuriel Oduwole is delivering that. one of her biggest addresses but in Paris, where she spoke in front of about 80,000 people on the need for countries to take seriously girl-child education. Zuriel says issues relating to girl-child education are key to developing a better society, while especially African countries should discourage early marriages of young girls. Now, one of the things that got me interested in talking about girls' education was because when I visited many different countries like Ethiopia or Ghana, Nigeria, and even Tanzania, I saw many children out on the streets selling things, and I didn't like seeing that. But here is the saddest thing that I learned. In some countries on the African continent, girls as young as 12 years old are getting married. The young activist says it is time for world leaders to speak with one voice and condemn every form of forced marriage and gender discrimination that pose a threat to the girl child education. I talked to presidents and prime ministers about this issue and I try to get them to create policies so that the girls in their countries can go to school until at least the age of 18. In Nigeria, it is estimated that about 5 million children do not have access to primary education, a problem the government has pledged to address. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. Haji. Hello. Haji. Is it, right now I'm in Abuja. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Hello? Adamu! Right now I'm in Kano. Yes. When I get back, I will just call you. Look, what is wrong with you? I'm talking on the phone and you are gesticulating and doing. What's wrong with you? Daddy, where exactly are we as we speak? Are you alright? This is Lagos. Well, you just lied to someone that we are in Abuja. Keep quiet there. Who told you you can tell an elderly person is lying? Daddy, you just lied. And by lying, you are raising corrupt children for the future of Nigeria. That is corruption, not in my country. Corruption, not in my country. Welcome back. It's time for business with Ngozi Okoye. Thank you, Fidelia. Nigeria plans to sell 130.37 billion naira worth of treasury bills at an auction on October 4. The central bank plans to offer 38.79 billion naira in three months paper, 33.49 billion naira in six months bill, and 68.18 billion naira in one year notes. Results of the auction will be announced on the same day. The Apex Bank issues treasury bills twice a month to help the government finance its budget deficit, curb money supply growth, and provide an avenue for lenders to manage liquidity. The debut 100 billion Naira Sukuk offer by the Debt Management Office was oversubscribed by approximately 6%. According to the statement issued by the office, investors in the bond, which has seven year tenure included pension funds, banks, fund managers, and retail investors. DMO said the total subscription to the Sukuk offer was 105.88 billion Naira. The market capitalization appreciated at the close of trading today on the floor of the Nigeria Stock Exchange as against yesterday. A total of 28 stocks closed in greens with Nestle topping the charts after making the losers list yesterday. Other top gainers include Dangote Cement, Zenith Bank International, International Burials and Stambik IBTC. The losers table had Mobile, Nigeria Burials, Guarantee Trust Bank, Lafarge Africa PLC, and PZ Cousins Nigeria Topping. And on the leading traders bench were Jaiz Bank, Mayor PLC, First Bank of Nigeria Holdings, Diamond Bank, and Access Bank PLC. A total sum of 136.403 million shares valued at 1.269 billion Naira exchanged hands in the 2,860 deals. And that's it on business news. We'll now go on the short break. When we're back, we'll return to international and sport news. <laughs> Give him his shoes somewhere here. His phone and uh, everything. Don't do like that to Leno. Thank you. So, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, where do you okay. huh? Where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. You never shake body. Shake wait, body, wait, see? Wait. Huh? You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. 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 I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, there. down. What? Come, man. What's this man still doing here? They say I do shake body. Uh, I shake body, I shake body. They say I do this. Yeah, and I say I don't get color. You are asking for money. Sorry, Sorry ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. 
Thousands of South Africans marched on Wednesday against corruption under President Jacob Zuma's rule. Zuma, who is accused of corruption, has severely survived moves to impeach him. The latest, which was in August, left him politically wounded after some members of his party backed the opposition's no-confidence motion. He can remain head of state until a par parliamentary election in 2019, although the next ANC leader could edge him out next year. Former Thai Prime Minister Ying Lok Shinawatra has been found guilty of criminal negligence and sentenced in absentia to five years in prison. The Supreme Court convicted her of mishandling a rice subsidy scheme, which allegedly cost Thailand at least $8 billion. Ousted in 2014, weeks before a military coup and later impeached, Ying Lok denies all charges and fled before the verdict, reportedly to Dubai. Nigerian professional football club Ainba has denied reports that they are on the verge of signing Maxwell Konadu, who led Ghana to the 2017 Wafu Cup title. After Ghana's 4-1 defeat of Nigeria, reports emerged that Ainba had started negotiations with Konadu, but Ainba's sporting director Jude Anyadufu says the Abba Elephants are satisfied with the performance of coach Benga Ogumbuti. West Ham and Tottenham have been charged by the Football Association with failing to control their players in Saturday's derby at London Stadium. Spurs won the Premier League match 3-2 but almost squandered a three-goal lead. The Hammers were pressing for an equaliser in stoppage time when a late melee involving several players occurred, prompting the charge. Both clubs have until Thursday to respond to the charges. Well, that's all on news now. Thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Aguncha.